What's the difference between a roller cam and a flak tappet cam? We're about to find out. Let's take a closer look. Come check this out. What we got here are two cams from almost identical Chrysler 360s. One's from a 1986, the other one's from a 1992, early 90s. During those few years, they upgraded the cams to roller cams and roller tappets. And check out the difference. There you go, they're timed together. Now you can see the difference between the roller cam camshaft and the flat tappet cam. The roller cams, they have more of an egg shaped lobe as opposed to more of a arrow shaped lobe for the flat tappet. So the roller cams, they're able to have a more aggressive lift in the longer duration. So they'll lift the valve quicker and hold it open for longer than with the flat tappet cam. With the flat tappet cam here, we got the flat tappet that rides on these more arrow shaped lobes and it just it's just able to ride on it nicer. So there's the two side by side identical from the same engine. Two stock Chrysler 360 cabs. That's the difference. I know what you may be thinking. If I'm gonna be replacing my cam with an aftermarket cam, I might as well just throw a roller cam in, right? Well, it's not that easy, unfortunately. It's not only the cam and the lifters that are different. It's not as easy as just throwing a roller cam and roller lifters into an engine that's designed for a flat type of cam. There's additional parts and things that you'll need to do in order to do that. It's because the flat tappet cams, they're designed to rotate as they ride the cam lobes. And, and the roller cam lifters, they need to stay in one spot. If they rotate, then that's definitely not a good thing. So with the roller cam lifters, you have some keepers that hold them. There's got to be some mechanism that holds them in line with the cam lobes. Take this Chrysler 360 for example. Not only is the difference in the lifters, it also has these lifter keepers that keep the lifter in line with the cam lobes, and it also has this to keep everything in line as well. If this engine didn't come with the roller cam, it wouldn't have these bolts here to mount this plate that holds the lifters in, in place. So it is possible, but you'd have to be drilling holes and tapping holes out. So the 360 that came from the factory with just the flat tack bits. As you can see here, this is a 1986 Chrysler 360. Same engine, but five or six years earlier. It came with a flat tappa cam. And you can see, for this plate, it doesn't have the bolt holes. So obviously, this block will have to be, would have to be modified in order to convert it to a roller cam setup. It doesn't end there either. If you want to upgrade an engine from a flat tappa cam to a roller cam, you'll also have to change your push rods, your rockers, and uh, who knows what else. Leave a comment if you know anything that I missed. It's a much bigger, more expensive job than just replacing a cam. That's why when most people are rebuilding an engine, they just, if, it, if the engine comes with a flat tappet cam, then you just replace it with a more aggressive flat tappet cam because it'll save you a lot of money and you got a pretty decent engine anyway. All in all, it just ends up being way more expensive to upgrade from a flat tappet cam to a roller cam. I guess it depends what you're going for with the rebuild. If it's just for a truck application, you're probably better just to stick with the flat tappet cam. If you're building a race car ever and you want that mid to high end horsepower, to get you down that track, then you might want to consider an engine that has a roller cam. Comment whether or not you think it's worth upgrading a flat tappet cam to a rollerized cam. Is it worth the extra work and the extra cost, or should you just throw a more aggressive flat tappet cam in there? Let me know what you think. Subscribe for more truck stuff.